So I've made a full-fledged episode centered around the Unica Comets in the past, and it was really popular. So I decided to bring in a Unica Comets writer and talk more about the organization. So let's talk about the New Jersey Devils Youngbloods. I hope you enjoy today's episode. Buckle up. You're Locked On Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. Elias scores! Oh, Steven stepped up, nailed him. Rodor has got the puck. What a shot. The Devils win the Stanley Cup. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked on Devils podcast here on the Locked on Network. I'm your host, college hockey play-by-play announcer. Also, Devils drive for Pucks and Pitchforks, Trey Matthews. We're going to talk Utica Comets, and joining me on today's show is Ben Burnell. He is a writer for the Utica Comets. Ben, how you doing? Good. How about yourself? I can't complain. So before we talk about the Utica Comets, can you provide uh, a little bit of background about yourself to my listeners as to uh, what you do for the Utica Comets and what platform you cover them on specifically? Yeah, I uh, write for the uh, the Sentinel Media Company, um, covering a little bit of everything uh, with a, a, a focus on the, the Utica Comets. I've been covering the, the Comets now for about uh, seven seasons uh, since the 15, 16 season. So um, next season will be the Comets 10th since AHL hockey returned um, back in 2013. So, um, you know, try to get information out there, uh, you know, through Twitter, um, B, uh, B underscore you are Sentinel. Uh, on Twitter. And then uh, the website is URSentinel.com. Uh, stories are on there, you know, throughout the season. Um, so uh, just trying to get uh, people engaged and information um, about the team, because uh, I know people are interested, that's for sure. So Ben, um, you obviously very clo- closely associated with the Utica comments. It was a very successful season for them. Uh, what were your overall thoughts uh, as the season wrapped up when they lost to the Rochester Americans in the AHL playoffs? Yeah, I would say uh, bittersweet is probably a good word to go with it. I mean, you have all that success during the the regular season. Uh, guys are, you know, making strides in their game. The, the guys that you're looking for uh, as the prospects in the New Jersey organization, uh, you know, you're, you're in first place for most of it. You've got a, a record you know, from the start of the season and then, uh, you know, kind of have a, a tough series against uh, Rochester in five games. And um, you're never quite sure what's going to happen in the playoffs. And, you know, like Kevin Deneen said at the end of his, uh, you know, season presser, uh, they underachieved, uh, which I, I don't disagree with. Um, so uh, tough to see it kind of end that way. I know a lot of the guys uh, and a lot of the team were, you know, expecting to go a little bit further into the playoffs and, and maybe challenge for, um, you know, the, uh, the Calder cup here in June, but you know, that's, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. So, uh, you know, you, you kind of rest up, put in the work and, and come back next year and, you know, hope that the roster has a similar kind of makeup that, um, you know, can, I guess, contend if, uh, that's the best way there's always a lot of change in the AHL. So you're never quite sure, um, you know, what's going to happen, but uh, you know, you've got a couple guys um, like Joe Gambardella and, and Robbie Russo who are both signed for next season, who I could easily see uh, continue to be, you know, leadership guys for the team. So, um, you know, we'll see how, uh, how it all plays out. There are a lot of time between now and, and training camp. So, interesting to see, you know, what plays out with, uh, you know, free agency and the draft and, you know, kind of all, all that stuff that comes with it in the summer. Obviously there's a lot of big name players uh, set to possibly join the Utica Comets uh, come next season. I think the biggest one would have to be Luke Hughes once he signs his entry level deal, uh, whether or not the New Jersey Devils bring him up right away or just let him start out in Utica uh, that that'll be up in the air, but ultimately I just want to get uh, Ben your thoughts real fast on Kevin Deneen. Like, what made the players like just click under his leadership? Like, there has been a lot of rumors and speculation that maybe if Liddy Ruff were to hypothetically uh, be given the boot, then Kevin Deneen would be one of the candidates to take his position. Obviously, that's not going to happen. But ultimately, it's just like 
uh, Kevin Denise, still a, a really good coach, was able to get the most out of his players, able to get high production from a lot of uh, players who could make an impact at the NHL. What was it about Kevin Denine that just had his players uh, just play like the way they did? I think a lot of it goes back to he's a fairly easygoing guy, but he also wants to win. And he, I mean, he's got so much experience as a player and a coach, you know, as a coach, it's AHL level, NHL level, the international level. Um, so I, I feel like I get the sense that he's upfront and honest with players and, you know, wants to help them get better. Um, you know, you talk to Alex Holtz and, uh, you know, probably middle of the season and he said he was the best coach he's had, you know, Alex Holtz is, is 20 years old. So, um, you know, still young in his career. So, you know, it, it's great to hear that, you know, he likes playing for him too. I mean, you got a guy like Chase DeLeo who's played for Kevin in San Diego and, and also seems to enjoy playing for him. Um, you know, like I said, I, I think it, it goes a lot with, they want the best for their players and they want to help them, you know, get better and, you know, make that next step, um, and, you know, have success. So, um, you know, it, it, I think there's a, a few different things that help go into that with, uh, with Kevin Deneen and, um, you know, having success, um, you know, it certainly helps, you know, with those, that playing career and, you know, the coaching career as well. So, uh, certainly a, a good start and looking forward to kind of seeing how things go, um, uh, now that, you know, kind of those first year, I guess, jitters, I wouldn't call them jitters, but first year kind of, uh, newness to everything, uh, you know, coming into an organization and, they just seem to kind of hit, hit the ground running too. Uh, you know, new coach, uh, guy that, you know, learning a different system as well. So, um, I feel like another year or having the year under, you know, his belt here, um, is going to help even more, um, with, uh, next season. So there's been a lot of good players so far for you could comments, uh, AJ Greer, he had a big year for them. You talked about Alexander Holtz. Riley Walsh was able to lead uh, all defensemen in assists for the Comets organization. Uh, what players stood out for you in terms of their overall uh, skill set throughout the course of this very successful season for Utica? Yeah, I think Fabian Zetterland is one guy that I, I think he can point to. Um, you know, I was looking at the the roster uh, before the season started because a lot of these guys, you know, I'd only seen sporadic you know, kind of, uh, games from them because obviously, you know, they were in the same division as, as the Comets and, um, you'd seen some of these guys over the years. Uh, but baby in Zetterland was a guy that I was like, okay, looking at his numbers. And I, I, I was like, you know, this looks like a guy who, um, is poised to kind of have a breakout season. And I think he did. Um, I think you could argue that he was, you know, an MVP candidate for the Comets and he, you know, ended up, uh, I think winning the media, um, the Utica media, uh, MVP award. So, uh, wasn't unanimous. Um, I voted for Chase DeLeo, you know, in that, but I think Fabian Zetterland, uh, is a guy that certainly stepped up. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing that stands out about him is that he's, uh, excited <laughs> every time he steps on the ice. And I think you saw some of the celebrations there in the NHL when he got that call up. Um, and that just transferred over from his time in Utica, but, uh, plays hard, uh, you know, has that offensive skill. And I think he's continuing to improve that defensive side too, to, to kind of help, uh, you know, get him to the next level as well. Um, but, you know, we talked about AJ Greer, Alex Holtz as well. Um, you know, you look at Kevin Ball and Nikita Hotuk, you know, those two guys using kind of their physical presence and, you know, big bodies to, uh, you know, help, uh, shore up things on the defensive side. I think those two guys, um, came along well, uh, from the start of the season, um, to the end of it too. So, uh, great to see those guys get those call-ups and, you know, show everybody that, you know, okay, they can, they can step in and help. So, uh, still young. And I think any experience like that is, is beneficial. So, uh, interested to see how the summer goes for 
a lot of those guys and and kind of what comes next. I mean, uh, the Devils still have to re-sign uh, Zetterlin because he's a, a free agent. So I'm sure that will happen. Uh, I guess anything is possible, but I guess I'd be more surprised if they didn't resign him at this point. So um, interested to see how uh, how year number four goes for Fabian after such a breakout season for him. Don't worry, there's still more to talk about with Ben in terms of the Utica comments. But first, I want to bring you guys the first live read this morning. And it comes from our friends at Athletic Green. So it literally is a product that I use every day. I started taking AG1 because I wanted to be happier. I wanted to be healthier. And I need a better sleep cycle. And AG1 was definitely the answer. So here's the reason why. Its lifestyle is friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free. Contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything. While still tasting good, supports better sleep quality and recovery, supports mental clarity and alertness. It's one thing uh, that's the best about this product is that Athletic Green uses the best of the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third-party testing. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills or supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and you need to pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance and now the second live read this morning comes from our friends at Built Bar it's the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar so don't you love a chewy chocolatey brownie what about a caramel brownie with caramel swirl on top so good what if I told you you can have that chewy chocolatey delicious plus 17 grams of protein you're in luck because caramel brownie bars are available at built.com right now and all you gotta do is act fast because they're a fan favorite and they'll go by quick forget about dessert these are better than dessert plus the macros are unreal 130 calories 70 grams of protein and only four grams of sugar i would replace a regular brownie with built's caramel brownie bar in a heartbeat the best part caramel brownies are covered in 100 real chocolate like for real with built you don't have to sacrifice tasty for healthy you can have both and all you have to do is go to built.com use promo code locks 15 and you'll get 50 percent off of your order again use promo code locks 15 for 15 percent off your next order there are a million reasons why you should try Built Bars, but for now, let's just say that Caramel Brownie will rock your world, and that's not an understatement with Built. Tasty is the new healthy. Go to Built.com right now and get your box of Caramel Brownie Bars right now. Okay, back to our discussion with Ben as we talk more Utica Comets. Take it away. Yeah, Fabian Zetterlin had a great impact in the few NHL games that he was given, and uh, people were talking about how Zetterlin basically outperformed Alexander Holtz when it came to just getting that NHL chance. We saw Kevin Ball also able to have a somewhat of a good impact as as well because he's a good shot suppressor. He was able to keep uh, possessions alive for New Jersey Devils in the offensive end. And overall, you know, Kevin Ball, I think, will be a great defenseman for the Devils moving forward. Still has a lot of room to develop. Alexander Holtz, I believe, like if we give him more of a chance like we did in training camp and also preseason, I think he'll be just fine. But, you know, ultimately, when, when you saw some of these Utica Comets players be brought up to the NHL, so whether it's Nikita Ahotuk or uh, Fabian Zetterlin, Kevin Ball, whatever the case might be, who was uh, that person that just surprised you the most in their overall uh, just get it, just translating what they were doing for Utica to the NHL? Like, who was that person that just uh, just surprised you with, with when they made their NHL debut? Riley Walsh also as well. Uh, yeah, it would have been nice to see, uh, Riley get, uh, maybe another, uh, another game. And, um, you know, I thought a Hotuk, uh, kind of stepped in and was playing the same game that he was playing, you know, with Utica. So it was nice to see that, uh, he was able to step in so quickly on that, that call up and, and kind of showcase what he has with, you know, that, that big frame and his physical play, uh, you know, you'd like to see him maybe chip a little, more on defense but or uh, i'm sorry on offense but uh you know i i obviously uh the the game for him is defense and i, I thought he showed well um and going from the ahl to the nhl i thought so too so we we talked about the uh the highs for the Utica comments but what were some of the lows that you saw this season because you know obviously they got off to a great start of the season they won uh i believe like what 15 in a row before losing their first game 
13 and in a row. Yeah. 13, 13. Yeah. And then uh, they got to the playoffs, got knocked out after getting a bye. But what were some of the, the low points of the season for you could comments that had you just scratching your head a little bit? Yeah, I think one big thing was, I mean, the goaltending was, was solid, but it's, it's always tough when you're relying on, on three rookie goaltenders in, in the AHL. So uh, I think that, you know, there was, there were some great moments, um, you know, with Nico Dawes and, um, you know, Akira Schmid, um, you know, I think they had their moments uh, at times, but at other times too, I think still a learning process and, you know, uh, you look at them and a lot of times rookie goaltenders usually aren't spending much, if any time in the NHL. So I think it's great that they were able to get that experience, but I would have liked to, I guess, seen them spend more time in the AHL trying to get their, uh, I guess their feet underneath them a little bit. And it seems like that might be more of the plan uh, next season, you know, <laughs> we'll see. Um, you never know with injuries and everything like that. So, um, you know, it, trying to find a, a, a goalie maybe that can step into uh, and help it, you know, if needed. Uh, I thought Merrick Smittens was uh, fine throughout the year. Uh, maybe uh, had to rely on him a little bit too much at times, um, which, you know, maybe isn't fair to him, but that's the, you know, the hand you're dealt. So, um, you know, the other thing I would have liked to have seen is the team be a little bit more, I guess, consistent uh, throughout the season. And I'm talking like in games, like you'd have a, a good period and then maybe the next period isn't great. And then, you know, it, it kind of maybe snowballs away or they, they figure it out and, you know, uh, rally for a win or something. So uh, I would have liked to have seen more, I guess, of full 60 minutes, as you know, everyone says. So um, you know, that was something that, um, you know, I think you'd like to find a little bit more, especially for a team that had, uh, you know, Calder Cup aspirations. Um, you know, wasn't wasn't sure if they could kind of figure it all out. Um, and unfortunately, uh, ran into a, a tough uh, Rochester team. Um, so, you know, defensively, too, I think they've got a little bit uh, to figure out. You know, they were young. I mean, you look at you know, uh, Ball, Hota, Grolo, uh, Vakoyevich, a lot of young guys uh, mixed in with, you know, vets like Russo and, and Watherspoon. And I think Russo and Watherspoon did a great job, you know, leadership wise, um, you know, so you're, you're always curious how a mix like that's going to work. Um, and, you know, Kevin Deneen mentioned uh, getting better defensively as well next season. So uh, I think at times that was um, a challenge. And, um, you know, we're helped by that goaltending, but at the same time, it was a little bit up and down for, for both of those, uh, throughout the season. So, uh, yeah, you'd like to see maybe some guys be a little bit more consistent. I mean, you've got your, you know, some of your top guys, obviously that are, you know, leading the team in points and everything, but, um, you know, as you go down the list, maybe there are guys that you would have liked to have seen more consistency from, and, you know, obviously uh, things happen. I mean, this is still wasn't a completely normal season. I mean, they had the, uh, the pause there in December and, you know, guys get injuries and, you know, stuff like that too. So, uh, you know, hopefully you can uh, put in the work during the summer and, you know, step back out on in the fall and, and things go maybe a little bit more consistently. Yeah, so my, my thing was about Nico Dawes, especially, I felt as though he wasn't ready for the NHL. Well, he wasn't ready to play in the amount of games that he was given, but obviously the Devils had no choice because Kenzie Blackwood, Jonathan Bernier went, both went down. I would argue and say that Nico Dawes was probably our best goalie. Yes, I'm not saying he was perfect. He was inconsistent at times, but at the same time, it's just like we thrusted him into a role that quite honestly, he had no business of being in. So I, and then Akira Schmidt just flat out wasn't ready yet, but I, I would argue and say that maybe Nico Dawes was the devil's best goalie uh, this past season. I, I, I would normally give it to Jonathan Bernier, but he only played in about like 10 games. So I think Nico Dawes definitely has a lot of potential. I just think that maybe the devils did overwork him, but we didn't really have many options behind him. But um, speaking of, uh, of players with potential, so one thing I've been saying on my show is that with Riley Walsh, 
uh, when he played at Harvard, one of his uh, line teammates was Adam Fox, who, ju- who won the Norris Trophy last year. Now, the thing about Riley Walsh is that I feel like he has a lot of potential, and I feel as though if you put him on the same roster uh, that's coached under Lindy Ruff, I feel as though Riley Walsh has a chance to actually have a good impact at the NHL level. Not saying that he'll be on the same level as Adam Fox, but maybe a poor man's version of, of Adam Fox, if, if that makes sense. And ultimately, he did lead the defenseman in assists, and I feel as though he's on the right track. I'm glad that he was able to get a few NHL reps, uh, but... My, my question to you is that do you think Riley Walsh has the potential that I'm basically making it out to be, or am I just overstepping it a little bit because of, you know, of his line teammate partner being uh, Adam Fox? Yeah, I think he's got the potential. I mean, uh, you look at the, the offensive side of his game and it's certainly something that stood out. Uh, like you said, the, the assists and the, the points were there. Um, I, I think uh, maybe the defensive side, um, sometimes could, you know, use a little work. Uh, and I think you could say that for a lot of young guys too. So, um, you know, I, I think he certainly had a standout season. And if that defensive side is a little bit more, uh, we go back to the consistency. Uh, I, I, you know, I certainly think he was fine, uh, but it's in the NHL, it, that, that side has to be almost perfect. Um, if you want to stay in the lineup. So, um, certainly a good learning experience for him this year. And I, I certainly think he's got the potential to, you know, um, get an, a, at least a longer look, if not, you know, play a majority of the season, um, up with the, the devils. I would have to, uh, agree in that, in that sort of sense, because I feel like Riley Walsh definitely has a lot of potential. He's one of my favorite prospects and I don't feel as though a lot of people, you know, talk about him as much as they could potentially, but, Here's someone else I want to talk about. Here's someone that gets talked about a lot. We've already touched on him before, Alexander Holtz. Now, the thing is, is that when you put him on the NHL roster during his cup of coffee in the NHL this past season, didn't really do anything. But at the same time, Devils didn't really put him into a position to be successful. Then you put him in the Utica Comets, lighting it up, 50 plus points getter. And he was, you know, like you said, he was always in the running for a team MVP. But my, my overall thing is, like, I think uh, Alexander Holtz is a given to make the NHL roster uh, for the New Jersey Devils come next season, barring anything catastrophic happening. I, I, I guarantee him a spot on the NHL. Obviously, a lot can happen during preseason and training camp, but I want to get your overall thoughts because you're actually with the organization. Do you think someone like Alexander Holtz, do you think he's ready to be on the opening night roster? Or do you think the New Jersey Devils should take their time and just let him play in Utica and develop? What did you see out of Alexander Holtz this season? I think that was the kind of the idea this year was to give him time. I mean, everyone, I, I feel like a lot of people forget that he's 20, 20 years old and playing in North America for the first time. Like it's a different game. Speed's different. You know, the space and stuff is different. So uh, I, I certainly think, there was nothing wrong with leaving him uh, in the AHL to kind of build that confidence and build up his game to a point, especially on the defensive side uh, where you can be trusted, um, especially under a coach uh, like Lindy Ruff, where you want that, um, you know, you want to be able to trust your young guys. So, you know, you look at Alex Holtz and you can find all the clips uh, you know, he obviously has all of the, the, skill and talent on offense and I think it's putting it all together um you know especially with that uh defensive side to kind of put it put him ready um you know for for the NHL game and you know I certainly think that he's gonna be on the NHL team uh more so than the AHL next season I think I said somewhere else that I guess I'd be surprised if Alex uh, plays more than 25 games in the AHL next year. So um, uh, I certainly think, you know, especially with a, you know, high draft pick like that, uh, give him some time, you know, that first season. And then, um, you know, then it's up to him, you know, to kind of continue to put in the work and continue to improve. But uh, I could see him uh, on the roster next year for, you know, the devils, uh, but you know, you got to earn it. So, 
uh, keep continuing to put in that work. And, um, you know, I, I think it helped him playing with guys like Greer, uh, you know, Chase DeLeo, um, you know, a couple of times he was on, on a line with his best friend, uh, Fabian Zetterlin too. So, um, you know, got that power play experience. Uh, I think all really good things. Now, uh, that was another guy where you'd maybe like to see a little bit more from down, down the stretch in the playoffs. Uh, you know, but tough series for a lot of guys. And it was, it was, uh, you know, I don't think everybody was quite on the same page, um, in that series. And, you know, that's kind of the way things go sometimes in the playoffs. Okay. So you talked about being NHL ready and how you have to earn it. Something I did on my show a couple of weeks ago was I talked about players who uh, most likely will make the NHL roster. So I talked about like maybe Alexander Holtz, Fabian Zetterlin, uh, Jesper Boquist, you know, players of that nature who most likely will make the roster next year. And I also talked about players like sort of like Riley Walsh, who might be on the fence, but maybe not quite ready yet. In your mind, who's NHL ready and who's also somebody that the, that the devil should keep an eye out, most likely won't make the roster, but someone just to keep an eye out uh, come training camp. Yeah, I, I think uh, you'll look at uh, guys like, you know, Tice Thompson, uh, Nolan Foote. I think those guys, uh, if they continue to, on the path that they're on, could easily be options that uh, get a look at, you know, throughout the season. Uh, more so than, you know, just the end of end of season kind of opportunities that they had this year. Um, you know, talked about Riley Walsh. I, I think he's certainly a guy that, you know, could, uh, you know, turn some heads. Uh, it's, it's tough for him the way he ended his season, you know, missing time because of uh, appendicitis injury. So I uh, would have liked to have seen him more in the playoffs, but uh, that happens, um, you know, I would like to see them uh, re-sign AJ Greer. I think he certainly can help. And, you know, it's obviously a different role probably for him at the NHL level compared to the AHL level. But uh, I, I think it's hard to ignore a guy who uh, just put up a career season um, and, uh, you know, certainly helped that, you know, that Comets team this year. So, um, you know, you look at uh, guys like Ball and, and uh, Hotuk and um, you say, well, you know, depending on how things go with the defensive side, maybe one of them, uh, you know, starts the season um, and, you know, or they both come back down and, you know, they get their opportunities when you get injuries or, you know, whatever happens along the season. So um, I, I don't think uh, a Hotuck and a Ball are terribly far away. I, I thought they, uh, you know, showed well, uh, you know, at the AHL and NHL level. So, uh, you know, positives for the, the organization that you guys, you've got guys stepping up and able to step into uh, the lineup when, when they're needed at the NHL level. Cool. So um, I want to do something that I've done on my show before, which is I want you to give me your MVP, your rookie of the year, defensive player of the year, um, I guess unsung hero and also goalie of the year. And don't worry, I'll I'll remind you once we um like you know go on with this because this is something I did with the Devils, which was I gave my MVP rookie of the year and and so on. I know you had a vote in in the team MVP awards, so uh, I just want to have some light sh- uh, shown on the Utica Comets organization. Yeah, I uh, my MVP choice uh, was Chase DeLeo, uh, just because uh, I thought you know, he was a great distributor of the puck and uh, without him, I, I wonder kind of where the team would be a little bit more. Now I went back and looked and, you know, they did have a winning record without him in the roster, you know, when he was missing for various reasons, but I still think, you know, kind of the, the offensive talent and uh, the leadership that he brought um, was uh, hugely beneficial to that team. And, uh, you know, I thought this year was a year in which you could make the argument for about five different guys, uh, making the MVP and, you know, the team MVP that gets voted on by the coaches that went to AJ Greer. Uh, and I don't disagree with that pick at all. I mean, uh, huge season as well. So, um, you know, I know there were votes for, uh, like I said, uh, Zetterlin got the media MVP that wasn't unanimous, um, you know, and. I think you could make an argument for the goalies, um, you know, a couple other guys down the line too, but 
yeah, I went with Chase DeLeo and he ended up having a career year, um, which I, I don't, I kind of think flew under the radar a little bit. Um, but yeah, he was my pick. Uh, rookie of the year, I think it's hard to, hard to argue against Alexander Holtz. Uh, just, you know, scoring uh, and, you know, all the other things that he did, uh, kind of the, you know, highlight goals that you saw. Um, and I go back to him being 20 years old and playing in North America for the first time and, uh, you know, comes with learning, you know, how to do things outside of, uh, outside of the rink. And, uh, you know, seems like he was, uh, slowly figuring that out. And it, it helped that I think he was living with baby in Zetterland, but, um, you know, you look at him and, and the development that he made, uh, you know, there were a few times during the year that, you know, he's made some defensive plays that I guess I didn't expect. There was one where he, you know, got back on the, the back check and then uh, laid out to kind of block a, a pass or a shot uh, that I, I guess I wouldn't have expected him to do at another point in the season. Um, so definitely the guy that I look to as, as the rookie of the year, uh, defenseman of the year. I picked Tyler Watherspoon. Um, you know, I, I think his experience is hugely beneficial and just plays a solid game. And I don't think that you can discount the Olympic experience that he got. Um, I, I, I certainly think he was a, a good guy to have on the team, especially on that back end with, you know, so many young guys, uh, the team picked Robbie Russo, uh, which I, I think is a, a great pick too. I mean, he was, uh, you know, like a assistant captain all year. And I think played just a solid game as well. So, uh, you know, I, I think you can't be faulted going, um, you know, with either of those guys for, for defenseman of the year. Um, I think there was uh unsung hero. So un someone, unsung who, yeah, someone who maybe falls under the radar, but someone's still very valuable. Yeah. You know, when I wrote, uh, we, uh my colleague and I wrote a, Steve Jones wrote a, uh, kind of a look at, you know, the, some of the team awards, we picked an unsung hero and I went with Arnie Telvitti at the time, uh, just kind of developing into a good defensive kind of minded center. And uh, I think that's beneficial on a team that kind of maybe didn't have enough center depth at times, um, you know, and maybe the, you, you kind of look at the points and maybe they weren't as many as you'd like, but I still think that uh, he was, you know, a standout in, in that regard with, you know, face-offs and the, that kind of defensive minded role, you know, but I, I think as I think about it more, I think Joe Gambardella too is, is a guy that you could certainly argue uh, was an unsung guy, uh, obviously a, a assistant captain as well, but um, turned in that uh, kind of that leadership quality that you're looking for on a team that has a lot of young guys. Um, and I thought he brought a lot of uh, levity um, you know, I kind of wrote about it too, um, at one point close to the end of the season. And, um, you know, I, I think his sense of humor, uh, it, you know, benefits a team like that as well, but, you know, obviously, uh, chipped in the offense as well. And, um, certainly a guy that you could make an argument for, for being an unsung hero as well. And, uh, the final one was uh, goalie of the year. Yeah. You know, that that's tough because it's like, you look at, uh, Nico Dawes and like you said spent most of his time um in the NHL with the Devils this year so I guess I would lean more toward um Akira Schmid um you know in that one uh I, I thought he certainly made steps and was a guy that uh you know they they leaned on for for a lot of the season you know I think people forget that had everything gone correctly like you don't have injuries you don't lose scott wedgwood on waivers um akira probably starts the season in the echl and um you know i think it also gets forgotten that he was in in june u.s junior league last year and so to go from a u.s junior league all the way to the nhl in the span of you know less than a year or whatever it is uh i think is is tremendous for him you know obviously uh not quite ready for it because it's a whole different level and a whole different step and everything's faster but um i, I certainly think he deserves a, a lot of credit and uh i would give it to to akira schmid for for the way he played this year 
Final question for you, Ben. Uh, Luke Hughes most likely will sign his entry level deal come next year. I'm projecting that he's going to spend some time in Utica before he becomes a full fledged member of the Devils organization. Are you excited uh, to watch Luke Hughes uh, potentially play for the Utica Comets, or is there also a, maybe another player that you have your eye on who could make uh, the roster for the Comets next year? But like, uh, I'm. I'm particularly excited to see what Luke Hughes could potentially do to the organization. I believe he's going to be a great uh, piece for the Devils moving forward. I just want to get your thoughts on Luke Hughes and potentially other players uh, joining the Comets organization. Yeah, I think Luke Hughes is a, a guy that everyone's pretty excited about. I mean, you look at, uh, you know, the the pedigree with his brothers and, you know, the skill set that he brings, um, you know, to me, Luke Hughes is one of those uh, kind of players where, you know, you, you see teams bring in guys at the end of the year and, you know, they either go the a NHL route or the AHL route. And I certainly think that he's a guy that, you know, the devils look at and say, okay, let's get him some NHL games, um, you know, at the end of the year. And, you know, you don't know what's going to happen next year. And maybe they're maybe a little bit closer to the playoffs. So, um, you know, maybe he gets that experience that would help, but uh, to me, I, I guess I would lean toward him getting that experience at the NHL level uh, whenever he does sign after his, uh, his season. Um, you know, you look at it, you see, you know, guys like Owen Power um, in the, the Buffalo Sabres organization. He went that route too. And once you, you have a player that steps on the ice with the NHL team at that point in the season, you can't send him down. Um, so it's, it's an either or thing like, he plays for the NHL team at the end of the regular season, or he comes down to the AHL. And uh, to me, I, I guess I lean toward more. They want to get the, uh, the guy with the big name um, in the lineup and on the ice uh, for the NHL fans. Um, but anything is possible. I guess I could, you know, I, I guess it's possible they could send him down as well. But right now I, I lean toward uh, they'd want to get him a look up there. And then, you know, maybe, maybe at the, maybe at some point he comes down, but um, I just think that it's the name recognition and, and how excited everyone is about him. That uh, makes me think he appears in a devil's uniform before he does in a comet's uniform. You're absolutely right. And uh, I can't argue that I'm, I just say there's like no rush, like, you know, just yeah. like let, let the kid develop. And I, I just think he's ready to, you know, uh, forego college and actually join the Utica Comets. Quite honestly, that's the that's the measure that I I wish he would have gone. But I think he's going to do. He's he said he wanted to do two years at, at least at as a Wolverine, and then uh, he'll sign his entry level deal. But the way I see it, I think he's ready to like you know suit up and, and get onto the sheet of ice, whether it's in the AHL or the NHL. But the way I see it is like there there's no rush for the kid. But I given how well he did in college it just gets me that much more excited for his, uh, his future. Also what Matt Beneers was able to do for a crack in Owen power. Um, you, you just mentioned, and we all know that the university of Michigan took over in last year's draft. So definitely looking forward to Luke Hughes joining his, uh, his college brethren in, in the NHL at, at some point. So anyway, I want to thank uh, Ben Burnell for taking the time to do this interview uh, ben, you've been an absolute pleasure, my friend, and I'm glad that um, you were able to come on and talk all things Utica Comets. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for uh, reaching out and, and having me on. I appreciate you making time for me and, and enjoyed uh, chatting about the Comets. It's always, uh, always fun. You know, too bad that uh, we're not talking about it like they're still playing, uh, like some, you know, a couple teams are still going. But, you know, that's uh, I guess that's hockey in, in May and June. So, uh, you know, we'll have to see how how next season goes and you know the the kind of the players that they bring in and so always uh willing to chat and like i said appreciate you uh asking me to be on the show you know where to find ben and some of his work check it out and also check him out covering the utica comments come next season hey ben they made it farther than the new jersey devils that's all i can say <laughs> yeah you know uh, you'd like to see uh, both teams get in but anytime you can have an ahl team uh you know have a regular season like they did and um you know you'd hope the postseason goes a little bit longer but always fun to cover a uh, a regular season that uh, had as many uh highs and maybe uh the occasional low for the comets as well